Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is May 28th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. This is yesterday, and as I play through, you'll notice the clouds start to build up in the east slopes of the Cascades of uh, Oregon, and some lightning strikes happen just before sunset. And then as we go through the overnight hours, you can see that lightning activity move across southeast Washington. Looks like it moved right across Spokane last night as well in the Idaho Panhandle. And then we come to this morning, and you can kind of see the frontal system just offshore here, impacting Vancouver Island. That'll be moving inland as we go through the late morning hours today, and we're getting another round of thunderstorms, potentially a couple strong storms out there across portions of eastern Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Could be severe wind gusts associated with that act. Activity. Now, if we take a look at that, you can see the marginal risk. Again, this is just for wind right there across Idaho and Montana, extreme southeast Washington and eastern Oregon. So looking at what the Doppler radar may look like over the next 60 hours, you can see some of that thunderstorm activity that moved across Spokane last night or very early this morning, I should say. And then we have the frontal system moving through as we go through the day today. And then we have some showers popping off. You can't completely rule out a lightning strike with some of that activity, even west of the Cascades, but there's not much convective available potential energy associated with it. If we look across portions of northeast Oregon, though, there's probably going to be some strong storms that move into western Idaho and across northeast Oregon as we go through the evening and the night hours here as we go on in through the day today. So heads up for that. Eyes on the sky if you are east of the Cascades, especially across eastern Oregon and Idaho. And you can kind of see that convergence zone across western Washington will be hanging on in through tonight into tomorrow morning. And some showery activity as we go through Wednesday also. Again, there's going to be better instability here for tomorrow, Wednesday, and we could get a lightning strike across western portions, especially western Washington. You kind of see the convergence zone hang on across the central Puget Sound as we go on in through Thursday morning as well. And then we'll take a look at the extended forecast here coming up in a minute, but I want to show you the European. This is 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. Here goes the system swinging through today, and then we kind of try to build a ridge here as we go towards the end of the week. Hopefully we can get a couple nice days out of that. It doesn't look like we're going to warm up too much. But then that ridge flattens out a bit here, and then towards the end of the run, you can see the Gulf of Alaska trough off to the north and the west here on the picture, the upper left. And that's going to bring some additional storminess and perhaps atmospheric river activity here into the Pacific Northwest. More on that here in a moment. If we look at lightning flash density of potential, I just want to highlight for today, you can see where the activity is supposed to be most, some of maybe northeast Washington, eastern Oregon, and Idaho one more time. Now, if we look at Seattle Tacoma International Airport, you can see a little bit of a warm up here as we go through Friday, Saturday, then coming back down as we have another storm system rolling in here. Again, more on that here in a moment. Now, looking at Portland, Oregon, you can see something similar, and you'll notice that Portland's, you know, actually quite significantly warmer than Seattle for this time of year, especially relatively speaking. And then we drop back down as we go through the end of the weekend in towards the early portion of next week with some upper 60s returning, and then maybe getting warmer here as we start to go on into the first week of June. We'll see how that trends. And if we take a look at Bend and Spokane, you can kind of see something similar here as well. But if you see off in through what June 5th through 7th there, you see some warmer temperatures starting to emerge there as well. Now, uh, if you look at Seattle Tacoma, this is the frontal system we're moving through today. You can see it's got, we're not dealing with much here, a tenth of an inch or two. But look out as we go through the, uh, the nighttime Sunday here and on in through Monday. You can see some of these ensemble members have up over an inch in a 24 hour period here for the SeaTac Airport. And this could get pretty rainy here across some of the Pacific Northwest. And I'll show you that atmospheric river here actually starting now. Let's look at the European. This is yesterday afternoon's run. And we're going to take a look at all this precipitation that's going to be rolling in here. So we're going through Wednesday here, Thursday. You can see Vancouver Island and some of Western BC getting some good amounts, even the Rocky Mountains of British Columbia getting some nice precipitation amounts. But then the larger storm starts to arrive here as we go on in through Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. And you can see the precipitation totals really ramp up here for some of the Cascades of Washington, even Oregon, Coastal Range getting on the action. Also, some areas getting two to three inches out of that. And as we go on in towards the middle portion of the next week, you can see additional rounds. I mean, look at that, 2.3 inches of rain for Seattle over the next 200 hours or so. We'll see how that trends here. And we're going to take a more detailed look at that right now. This is at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. Now we're looking out over the Gulf of Alaska. You can see Washington and Oregon to the bottom right there. So we put this into motion. There goes the system swinging through today. A little bit of a ridge builds, transient ridge. Flatten that ridge out. And then look at the Gulf of Alaska troughing really get going here as we get into the early portion of next week. I mean, look at that. That's a pretty strong storm moving right into Haida Gwaii there. We're going to look at the sea level pressure map on that here in a moment. But look at that. That would be a pretty blustery solution here to much of the region as we go on in through the following week. Now, if we take a look here, I wanted to point this out. You can see that atmospheric river potential, and that's why all that precipitation would be occurring. So we're going to back this up, and this is the frontal system moving through today. 
just off the coastline here now. A little bit of a ridge build, but then we start to bring the next systems in here and you can see a fairly robust atmospheric river for this time of year, especially starts to move in on the day Sunday here as well. Then maybe another frontal system after that. And then we might even get one more off through the extended forecast. We look way off into fantasy land there. Now, take a look at the sea level pressure map here. Again, there's Southeast Alaska. There's British Columbia in Washington down to the bottom right. And so if I put this into motion, there's that ridging that might come towards the end of the week for a bit. And then you can see the Gulf of Alaska really start to churn here. And check out this low that comes rolling into Haida Gwaii, like a 978 millibar low. Pretty potent storm there as well. And of course, if this tracks a little bit further south or a little bit further north or comes in a little bit weaker here, we're going to have, a, of course, a wide solution of wind speed potential here across Pacific Northwest. So here's the six to 10 day precipitation outlook above average plot of the west coast here. But once you get off towards Idaho and Montana, you can see the pretty good below average signals we go through June 6th. Here's the eight to 14 day temperature outlook above average here across a lot of the west as we go through June 10th. And uh, eight to 14 day precipitation, you can kind of see the broad brush here with the troughing out over the Pacific Ocean and below average here across some of the northern plains. So yeah, anyway, I am in Lubbock, Texas today. We're going to be chasing storms out here. If you guys did not see that, we're going to take a look at that here. You can kind of see the enhanced risk down here. We're going to follow this outflow boundary here and try to find the best convective available potential energy in the unperturbed air and try to get on that. And hopefully we can catch one of those storms firing off a tornado here and get that on film. So anyway, um, yeah, so click like and subscribe. Leave me a comment uh, below on what you saw if you were out there east of the mountains yesterday, the thunderstorm activity overnight, and you'll probably get another round today for some areas. And yeah, we'll do this again tomorrow, potentially. I may miss a day here, upcoming here when I'm on the road, but otherwise, I hope you guys are having a good day, and I will talk to you guys later.